Welcome to the Missouri History Museum's Virtual Learning Day for March 2021. This video is part of our virtual craft room, so if you get an opportunity, please check it out. My name is Ellie, and our theme for March is We Demand. We are going to talk about the contributions of three women who were groundbreakers, rule breakers, and rebels in the educational arena. Women like Anna Brackett, Arsania Williams and Susan Blow. These women were strong, determined, and unstoppable in providing education to women and children. Did you know that all the years before first grade are important? Well, they are. There are many skills that are learned at an early age, like cognitive, social, and behavior skills. And when the opportunity is missed, Researchers have found that it creates a gap in developing social and emotional coping skills. Researchers have also found tons of evidence that preschool, Head Start, and kindergarten have tremendous lifelong benefits. So what a wonderful way to honor these educators by creating our very own educational and learning toolkits from items at home. But before we get started on our craft, let's look at some of those educators who have made tremendous contributions to education. We are going to look at Anna Brackett. Now, Anna Brackett, sometimes an unplanned detour brings an unexpected opportunity. For Anna Brackett, St. Louis was supposed to be a brief stopover on her way home to Massachusetts but it became the place where she was hired as the country's first woman principal of a normal school, an institution where high school graduates are trained to become teachers. Today, the school is called Harris Stowe State University, right here in St. Louis, Missouri. In addition to her work in the classroom, Anna was a noted philosopher and wrote many books and stories about topics from educational, philosophy to poetry. She was considered an international authority on women's education. Her work was printed in numerous publications. Now guys, we've talked about Anna Brackett. Now we are going to look at a woman by the name of Arsenia Williams. Arsenia Williams, she was raised in St. Louis and graduated in 1895 from the teacher training program at Sumner Normal School, St. Louis's only high school for black students. Besides teaching full time at Dumas Elementary School, Arsenia was also a founding member of the Phyllis Wheatley YWCA, where she held leadership positions for nearly two decades. Part of her greatest legacy was helping establish clubs throughout the city that were dedicated to the enrichment of African-American women and girls. Known in St. Louis's African-American community as the Human Dynamo, Arsenio Williams worked tirelessly to improve the lives of those who crossed her path. A celebrated teacher in St. Louis's segregated public schools for nearly 50 years. She also served as the president of the St. Louis and Missouri chapters of the National Association of Colored Women. That was Orsanio Williams, guys. Now friends, we are going to focus all of our attention on an educator who made a difference in educating preschoolers and kindergartens, Susan Blow. Susan Blow, I mean, she made tremendous contributions, guys. So let me tell you a little bit more about her. Susan Blow was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Her father, Henry Taylor Blow, was appointed ambassador to Brazil following the conclusion of the Civil War. So she, then 26 years old, she went along as his secretary to learn more about their culture. At the end of that appointment, the family toured Europe where she learned firsthand the methods that Frederick Froebel incorporated into his teachings. Now Frederick was a German intellectual 
who was pioneering a new way of teaching children in Europe in what was known as kindergarten. Susan observed his techniques and she prepared to bring this new novel approach to education back to America. She was so inspired by the educational philosophy of Frederick Froebel and came to believe that young children learn best by playing and exploring, not by memorizing facts. In 1873, Susan Blow opened the United States' first successful public kindergarten at St. Louis's De Pere School in Carondelet. While most classrooms were just plain, Susan's kindergarten classroom was bright and cheerful. It had low tables and short benches, just right for small children. The room contained many plants and books and toys for children to use during work and play. Students learned about colors and shapes and fractions by using simple objects like balls and blocks. They also learned about keeping themselves clean and eating well and getting regular exercises. She taught children in the morning and teachers in the afternoons. By 1883, every St. Louis public school had a kindergarten, making the city a model for the nation. Devoting her life to early education, Susan Blow was instrumental in establishing kindergartens throughout America. She believed that early education was always great to have to help students to explore their learning and from there on. She was one of the early members who put St. Louis on the forefront of intellectual thought and culture in the late 1860s. Today, there are more than four million American children attending kindergarten each year. Her kindergarten schools had become and still is an important part of American education. By the way, that first kindergarten school that Susan opened in De Pere, well, it is still here today, located as part of the Carondelet Historical Society, 6303 Michigan Avenue. So guys, I've told you all about our educators, so grab your materials and let's get started. We're gonna start first with the alphabet box. Now, remember I said in the materials you can use any size box, that is fine. This right here happens to be a saltine cracker box. You can use a saltine cracker box. You can use a little miniature mini cereal box. And all I did, guys, I just kind of covered it with some brown butcher block paper like this. And what I found, I had some scrapbook paper that had the alphabets on there. So I decided to cut them out and I glued them to the box. And what's cool about this, you can help children to identify their alphabets by spinning the box or standing the box up, putting it on its side, vertically, horizontally. This was really cool and it won't hurt them, it's really light. Something else I decided to do. Since Susan Blow focused on blocks, now I'm not good at making blocks out of paper, so what I decided to do, this container here is an empty Clorox wipes container. So, for my blocks, I decided to use sponges, just like this. And what I did, I had the sponges, but I also used stencils to write the numbers on here. Now, what's cool about this, you can have the child to put the numbers in order by color, or you can have them to mix the numbers up. And one cool thing about it, when it's time to clean up, just open up your Clorox box and make sure you put all of the blocks into there so your mom's not fussing about things on the floor. Close it up and there you have it. Now, I have this one cool thing I want to show you guys. I was looking online for something really cool that I thought kids may like and it was a puzzle. And what was so cool about it, you only use four popsicle sticks, okay? Just like this. Now what you need, you're gonna need an object to trace. And what I found, I had a bird, as well as a tree. And you would lay your object on the popsicle sticks. Now I had to tape them down so that they wouldn't move. 
but I traced it, then I colored it. But let me show you the results of that. I made two for you guys, okay? One I made was a bird, and the other one I made was a tree. So I'm gonna put these together for you guys real quickly so you can see the finishing results up here. And I thought this was real cool, guys. And you only need four popsicle sticks. That way they're not trying to find them all. And that's the tree. And this is real cool, too. This is the bird that I have right here. Show you this bird that I put together. Sometimes I, too, have issues putting puzzles together. But let's see. This one goes here. And there, I think, no. See guys, I tell you, I get twisted around too sometimes. But I've got it. That's the bird and this is the tree. And guys, these are really cool, simple, little learning kits for our kids when you're traveling or you're just at home and you want to make something out. I hope you have been inspired to continue creating educational toolkits for our young friends. As always, we'd love to see your creations and you can share them by tagging us at hashtag MoHistoryLearn. Thank you so much for joining us. Please check out the other craft videos as well as more online learning opportunities we have on our website. Remember to keep making history. Bye.